Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. What are you doing today? Today I am going to try to show you an episode of Fire by Night. Fire by Night was a Christian television show aimed at teenagers and it was popular among a certain segment of Christians when I was a teenager, so I remember it very well. Fire by Night ran from 1986 to 1995, which is way later than I thought it did. I thought they canceled it well before then. Uh, it was produced by Willie George Ministries. Willie George produced um, Christian entertainment programs for kids. He was best known for the show Gospel Bill. Uh, that was a Christian-themed cowboy show for little kids and it would teach them biblical principles. Um, Fire by Night was created sometime later uh, to uh, target teenagers. Fire by Night was hosted by Blaine Bartell. He is Canadian. Um, he hosted the show almost through its entire run. Um, he, uh, his wife was also on the show. Uh, in the, the show consisted of essentially two halves. The first half was um, kind of a traditional, more of a traditional like um, uh, talk show, like a late night talk show where you'd come up and do a, a monologue, which was usually, you know, preaching. Uh, and then they would have a guest, usually uh, a contemporary Christian music artist. And then um, occasionally they'd have a skit, some kind of a sketch comedy. And then for the last half of the show, it was a sitcom. Um, they changed it up a few times, but um, in the, I would say the best era of the show, they had a sitcom called Family First. Blaine Bartell played, um, played a teenage boy. I, I, I guess, was he supposed to be 17 or 18? He was still in high school. Um, although he was clearly older than that. I mean, he had a receding hairline. He didn't look anything like 17 or 18. Um, his wife, um, Kathy Bartell, played the sister in that show. Sometimes I just can't help myself but laugh at the jokes, because, often because of their absurdity, because th sometimes they try so hard to be funny and they fail so hard at it that that is that gets a chuckle out of me but occasionally they actually have a, a legitimately funny joke i wonder how much this show influenced my own sense of humor because sometimes for a christian show um it had a, a surprisingly subversive and almost anarchic sense of humor which also so do I. I may, I may have picked up some uh, of my humor from this show subconsciously. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing, but you know, it is what it is. Looking at the episodes as an adult, um, I, I'd have to say they're mostly harmless. You know, they're definitely very religious, very Christian, and they teach everything from a, a Christian point of view. Not just any Christian point of view, but very much an evangelical point of view. They use sometimes terminology and phrases uh, that you would hear in a charismatic church. If you're familiar with it, you pick up on it right away. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you may wonder, why did they say that? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it makes sense if you're from that church environment. The episode that I have queued up is um, Fire by Night, uh, episode 8910. I believe that's 1989, episode 10. Uh, sex, what do you pay to play part one with Josh McDowell? It's about sex, though, so you know they're going to be again it, right? They're again it. Unless you're married, and even when you're married, you know, keep the lights off. I have no idea if I can get this watched, recorded, edited, and rendered and uploaded before midnight tonight, but what the heck, I felt like doing this. Let's watch together Fire by Night, Sex, What Do You Pay to Play? 
All right, there, it starts with a warning. Some material covered in this program may not be suitable for children under 12 years old. Parental guidance is suggested. On the inside! Oh, that's too loud. 80 to 85 percent water and free. It's starting with the, it's a, a cold Bring open. On another round. I don't know, senor. That is your fifth pitcher of milk the, tonight. Maybe all right, that's racist. Percent. You never outgrow your need for milk. They are wearing brown face and playing Mexicans. Okay, all right. I really haven't seen this episode in a long time. I don't know if I would have started with this one because it's offensive right off the bat. Uh. So Tarzan and Jane have to get a preacher to marry them so they won't live in sin. Tearing down the world's morality. What could be worse? What could be worse? It's the opening to the show. So the show was filmed uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is where I'm from. The Metro Diner, uh, that is... We, it's not around anymore, but it's kind of a blast from the past. And that's the brook. Wow. Hey, welcome to Fire Benign. My name and is Blaine there's Bartell, Blaine Bartel. As you can see, our topic this time is sex. Oh, dear. What do you pay to play? And we're pleased to have a special guest with us, Mr. Josh McDowell. You say you're talking about sex? That's right. But not the kind of sex you see on MTV or in the latest teenage movies. We're talking about the reality of the truth of sex. They're going to teach what? us the sex truth of sex. Game. Although, like a game, it has and winners and losers. And you can tell losers. that this guy and knows. rolling the dice with premarital sex can be devastating. In fact, as you're going to find out in this program, it can even kill. We're going to be discussing could what kill. really happens when a boy meets a girl or what happens when boys meet boys or any combination thereof. Boys meet you know, today's boys. Young people oh, no. Uh, this might cliff, be the and many of them are uh, episode with uh, and homosexuality the and an ambulance. First of all, God says don't commit sexual immorality, not because I want to take the fun out of your life, but I want to protect the most powerful sex organ you have. I want to provide for the most delicate sex organ I created you. I want to protect the most sensitive sex organ you have. Your mind fooled you, didn't I? Hi. Hi. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I'm just really sorry. You are? Yeah. I mean, we said we'd wait. I'm glad we did. You're worth it to me. Even if that means playing miniature golf. What does miniature golf have to do with it? Love you. So do you have to... Does playing miniature golf like take your mind off of sex? Seventeen year old so girl. Like, Seventeen year old girl talking you're like, to her high school mm. friends. And, and then you go to the miniature golf and course and you're else. like, mm. finally she said I'd had enough and she said, Look, I don't want any more jokes about my virginity. I don't want any more pressure to become sexually involved. Because you need to realize, each one of you need to realize, whenever I want to, any day that I want to, I can become like you, but you can never again become like me. Every negative commandment in the Bible, there are two positive principles. Here. One to protect, the other me. to provide. There, oh, and when God careful. says in the area of Come sexuality on. to wait, he doesn't do it because he's a cosmic killjoy. He does Just it because out. he loves there us. Go. And he says, puppy. because I love you, That's I want you to wait because of you two positive bit, principles. I, I want to protect you. you. It, it, it essentially demonizes sex and presents sex as something impure, something 
to be feared, even. Um, it, it's prescribed only within the narrow parameters of what they interpret is moral uh, according to their interpretation of the Bible. Um, but having grown up in that environment, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't do anything to diminish hormones, right? So that's something that happens when you reach that age. What it does is it makes you feel extremely guilty about having those uh, thoughts and desires and um, lusts uh, and not being able to control it. Or, hey, they, they just had miniature golf. Look at that, miniature golf. Apparently, miniature golf is the secret to maintaining your virginity. And imagine if you're gay and you're that age and you start feeling those desires that you normally do when you, you know, reach puberty. Um, so you don't th think then you, you've got double guilt, right? Oh, no, I'm not saying because that. you're what guilty for it, because you can't control your lust when you're supposed to. Uh, and then, um, as far as they're concerned, years, homosexuality and is and a sin no matter when fun. and where you do it. That's always yeah, that. Yeah. AIDS will mark the end of the sexual revolution. Hey, you make it sound like we're moments away from some gigantic plague. Personally, I don't know anyone who's got any of these diseases. He was 24. He'd only had two sexual contacts in his life. One was his lucky number. And he's he was buried last January. So their message is, if you have premarital sex, you will die. They used the AIDS epidemic uh, to enhance the fear that people would feel uh, about sex. I had sex with my youth director. They weren't going to hire a kid um, that didn't have a high school diploma, that, that dropped out of school, that was 17 years old. And so I had to come up with a way of, of getting money. Yeah, and so how did you do that? Well, I turned to prostitution. How did she be great to see her graduate from high school and see her get married and everything like that, but... Um, did you know that by age 20, 86% of unmarried males and 67% of unmarried females will have already had sexual intercourse? The average age for a young person losing their virginity today is 13 years old for boys and 14 years old for girls. 1,100,000 teenage girls will become pregnant in the next year, and 400,000 of those pregnancies will end in abortion. Another 137,000 will end in miscarriage. And even since the push for teenage contraception, we still have had a 400% increase in teenage sexual activity and pregnancies. Surveys showed that religious conscious girls were 86% more likely to say that they wanted to be a virgin when they got married. And yet only 14% of these girls uh, will actually be virgins when they get married. In other words, Christian young people are yielding to these pressures too. And I want so you all to, uh, of the teachings the of Christianity and all the guilt that it throws on people four, doesn't three, stop them from having having sex. Is the will of God. Wow. Words, this is what God's plan how, what, is how for revolutionary. your life. It says that you uh, should abstain from fornication and know how you should possess your vessel in, in sanctification an and honor. God's when you could be stoned to death to abstain from for having that is sexual sex relations that were not allowed by the church, people were still doing it. So if you couldn't stop people, people from doing it when you were, were stoning them to death, you're not going to stop them from doing it by wagging uh, your finger okay. at them. What do you pay to play? You've liked her for days. She acted like she didn't even notice that you existed. You couldn't believe that she said yes when you asked her out. You're a little nervous. You're a lot nervous. But you look good and you know how good she's going to look. You want to make sure the night starts and finishes according to your plan. But play it safe. Don't forget that Don't forget little blue pill. Protection. 
Your pocket protects Oh my god. Thy word have I hid in my heart, O Lord, that I might not sin against thee. You know, that's gonna be a hot day. So now we have to endure uh, a music video from a contemporary Christian artist. It's tough because shit music uh, singing about how miserable it is to uh, have sex. In fact, a junior achievement. I was watching TV recently. My son, a condom commercial came on. This woman dances into a store and she gets two packets. She drops it into her purse. And then the next silhouette shows her having sex, not making love, having sex with her boyfriend. And the next silhouette shows her taking a shower in the morning, putting on a big bathroom. She walks out and has a cup of coffee with her roommate. And then she's like, she says this, last night I became a woman. What, were you an armadillo yesterday? What is media teaching this generation? The average person views 9,230 sex acts or implied sex acts a year. I don't think I've viewed 9,230 sex acts this year. I'm behind. I need to view so some more sex acts. Are between people who are not married. Our movie theaters are full of teen sex flicks that were popularized in recent years by Porky's, Bo Derrick's 10, Kevin Costner, Sizzle Beach, USA, John Ritter, Skin Deep. Each plot generally depicting that the cure for everything is to jump in bed. In a four-city study in Michigan, 77% so, yeah, of the girls had seen it, the six Sex was more freely depicted um, at the, box office, in the 80s and 90s than it was uh, in 50s and 60s media people. and earlier One than that. 14. But Even there's this myth that with the likes of the sex was Ford, invented in the 60s. Uh, back in sex. And, and of course that, Madonna uh, and ever increasing now everybody's having sex, but back in the 1950s and 40s and 30s and so on, uh, everyone was more chaste and everybody, they waited for marriage and all this. That is, that's, next time uh, you watch a, an older movie or um, read a book written in that time period, pay closer attention because people were screwing back then and as much as they were now. Says, but nice everything has had to be under the radar, to. right? It, not they they were living so dishonestly. Um, rather than you just, people on television, you know, JR, admitting and being more open about sex. what was Only really going on. In real life. Starting to realize that I was never going to have Former a child come up to me male and call me father prostitute. and put his arms around me and tell me that he loved me that I would never have a decent woman that loved me or cared about me. And all these things built up to a point of wanting to commit suicide. Perhaps the greatest contributor to the teen sex problem See, in North America. See, here's America's my problem with this. They're, they're showing people who have gotten to the point of being suicidal, many, many and the, average parent today the spends 14 uh, takeaway is that it's because the of their sexual immorality. One in every 36 marriages but ending in divorce in their it's own not the sex. Involvement and how they it's ended the way I asked them what their they're made to feel like about it. God gave the children to the parents. He didn't give them to the church, and he didn't give them to the public. So sex education is the primary function of the family. Well, the greatest things okay, did you hear that? Provide them a model of how so a man they're opposed to, to sex woman. education in and the so schools because God gave the children to the parents. So it's the parents' job 14, 15, to educate the kids life. about the sex. Fear is a loss of a parent um, which means if a parent age, doesn't, then the nobody does. Or, more accurately, you know, the other kids do. So, the things that could actually help, like sex education, uh, like contraception, they're against all those because they're not really concerned about the safety of the young people who are having sex before marriage. That's not really what they're concerned about. They want to stop the activity that they believe is wrong. They want to control those people's behavior. And they, they will use fear. They will use 
the fear of disease. They will use the fear of pregnancy. They will use the fear that they are impure, that no one will love them because uh, they're not pure. They will use the fear of those things. But they're not really concerned about those things. Here it is. Family first. We've reached the sitcom segment of uh, of the show. I, I know this is very silly, but I have a lot of nostalgia about this. Yeah. Kathy Bartell. Blaine Bartell and Kathy Bartell didn't end up getting a divorce, um, and uh, the reasons for that I won't go into. It's not like it's a secret. You could Google it. Oh, honey. Um, I just, but I just don't want to say anything bad about Blaine Bartell. He seems like a really, a genuinely good guy. They didn't have cell phones. You had to have change to make a phone call. You had to walk to a payphone and dial a number. Gross. We are here this oh, morning wow. to rescue innocent children from being killed at the hands of an abortionist and to save mothers from being exploited and lied to. 25 million innocent children have already been these are the heroes of me, their show. These people that would harass are you women uh, that were going no. uh, to uh, clinics well, you should. for their well, own I health mean, and their own the business. To choose for her own body. Right, well, I'm pro-choice. I believe a woman should choose to stay out of bed with a man that she's not married to. You think it's so easy. Right, wrong, black, white. Well, it's just not that easy. <laughs> you started this. I'm just going to finish it. There is such a thing as truth. You know that? And truth isn't always easy, and it's not always comforting, but it will give you peace. And if the truth were known, your whole pro-abortion stance is based on selfishness and fear. Hi, Connie. Hi. You hear that? Oh, uh, selfishness. Hi, Are you here with the pro-life rally? Uh, no. Actually, we're just on our way home, just walking by. Honey, you need to go get in the car. Well, listen, uh, we... It's been nice seeing you, but we'll, we'll see you I'm pretty sure Frito-Lay did not pay to have the product here? placement there. Cheryl, come on. Doug doesn't have a clue you're in town. Okay, oh, this is, the, is the old kitchen. girlfriend no, no, who moved out that. of state. Go up in Doug's bedroom. No, Cheryl, I don't want you in Doug's bedroom. Come over here. Now, Cheryl, just crawl in the fireplace. No, no, you'll get soot on you. Just, just stand by the fireplace, okay? Doug, come on in the living room. Dad, what do you need? Doug, you've got grease all over your cheek. Okay, I'll, I'll clean it up later, all right? I can't you really did it. Doug, uh, how long has it been since you've heard from Cheryl? I don't know, Dad. She never writes anymore. I think things between her and I have kind of fizzled out. But i got to go. Well, wasn't it just the other night that you were telling me uh, how much you've been missing her? Yeah, but I really don't miss her that much. It's not like I'd go crazy if I saw her again. All right. Hey, I want you to do something for me. What? Go over there and get me the fireplace. Get you the fireplace. No way! Yeah! What are you doing? Oh, good to see you. Why didn't you call? What are you doing? I wanted to surprise you. Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it kind of took me a little bit by surprise here. It's not like you went crazy or anything, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he just said sorry, that he didn't miss something. her all that much. Well, and things oh, between oh, them are kind of fizzled hey, look, out. I'm going to leave you two greasers alone, okay? See ya. Okay. Hey. Well, hey, They're going to get hey, grease doing, all over themselves. No, my family went on vacation. They're going to get all and greased sure up. I want to go with them. That's what we were going to do. Oh, great. great. She is Good pulling idea. his nipple. Um, Did you see that? Uh, she was twisting that baby. nipple. Oh, that's what we were going to do. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. He's like, she's out there. You better ooh, don't she's touch me. That's impure. Impure. Boy, it's great to see you, Cheryl. I can't even imagine being pregnant at our age. I'm never getting pregnant. 
Well, at least not till I'm married. Why? Are you on the pill? No, I'm not on the pill. What do you mean by that? Hey, sorry, everybody else is. Well, I don't really have any reason to be on the pill. Do you? No. Well, good, because for a minute there, I thought maybe you weren't, you know, like, pure. You mean a virgin, Connie? Pure. Well, I feel like this color of lipstick. I'm not. What? I'm not a virgin. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Connie? What? If I tell you something, would you promise to keep it a secret? Oh, my gosh. So, th I mean, they've sex, flat out said, they straight said it, that sex makes you impure. Pregnant. She's pregnant. Oh, never mind. How did it happen? Connie, stop it! Can't you see? I'm serious. Do you think I would care about something like this? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You're pregnant. You have to have a baby. Yeah, I'm pregnant, all right. Don't you understand? My mom doesn't want me to have the baby. She wants me to have an abortion. That's why we were at the clinic today. I'm just so glad you guys were there. She got real nervous, and that's why we left. Why does it feel so wrong? I mean, why does it feel so wrong? Life. Perhaps because you've been indoctrinated with a religion that you makes you feel guilty about it. You do not have to have an abortion. If the you adult you woman who child, had sex made the mistake. She's guilty. The fetus I guess I could do that. is innocent. I mean, hey, I'm only 17. So I'm the fetus the should get I'm deference to the adult do woman Please do. Um, who has done the bad thing. The, the woman is... Good job, Ty. The woman is right, not go. guilty of anything. Get set. Go. Wow. He runs like a Canadian. Get set. Blaine Bartell does go. seem like uh, a, a genuinely nice guy. Um, I follow him on Facebook. Um, he seems he seems really What's cool. He seems like a, a genuinely light, nice guy. He's still very dizzy, religious. Hey, he still um, has a ministry oh, and coach. still yeah, uh, preaches and all of that. Here. You hear me? Uh, but yeah, I hear you legitimately too. nice guy. Clarence, what are you doing? That's get Clarence. Sand, Clarence. Now get down the there wacky best do. friend. Coach, I knocked them all down. Did I win? Clarence! These are the jokes, folks. Hey, girls. <laughs> all right, now look over here. Those shorts are a little striper. too tight. Looks to me like the only running you've done all summer long is down to shopping, Bob, to eat more Twinkies. And that's why I'm here, to teach you girls to be like champions. No, I think you using or uh, calling them but girls as an insult yes sir <laughs> clarence uh jonathan and susan and cheryl and i are going on a double date well hey ty and i could go we could make it a triple date oh i guess that'd look pretty stupid wouldn't it <laughs> yeah that would look stupid clarence, with a guy sometime. dating a guy uh, downtown thanks for the swim downtown clarence. tulsa <laughs> even though it was a little bit one thing i really like are your lips and your earlobes lips and earlobes lips and uh, wait a minute, that's not in the script. <laughs> I'd puke if she said that to me. <laughs> uh, she's not saying it to you, Clarence. I am. <laughs> that's great. You're such a good actor. <laughs> there for a second you're acting just like a, just like a queer. Clarence. Queer. I'm not a queer. I just don't have a preference. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm serious, Clarence. Get out of here. I'm serious, too. Get out of here. Get out of my house. Get out of my yard. Get out of my life. And this is utter disgust. And he has to clean the house because, oh, no, a bisexual person was near him. I've got to pat on my nose. A ring, man. For me? Think about it, Collins. 
Engagement? You're getting married. You got Congratulations. It. All right, who to? Uh, Susan, what do you think? Oh, great. Does she know? Collins, Collins, I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm insulted. Does she know? Of course not. I'm gonna pop the question tonight. <laughs> what question? Come on, I'm serious about this, all right? Well, I know, but I mean, you're not gonna do it while we're all here, are you? Look, look, when we leave here, we're gonna go to Hunter's Point. Now, once we get up there, then I'm gonna take my right hand, and I'm gonna put it around my head, and I'm gonna scratch my nose. Now, when I do that, then you'll know to take off for a minute, okay? Okay. This is the signal. It's nice, real nice. Uh, a little bit nippy, <laughs> kind of nice. <laughs> well, hey, let me warm you up. Uh, oh. Oh. I think Doug, if I what are you ran doing? from a woman's touch the way Doug is Hi. running from her, Doug, look at me. Yeah, yeah, John. The perception would be that it's an insult, right? You're you're, you're so Doug. repulsed. It's the signal, oh, yeah. Doug. It's the signal. Let's, let's go for a walk. Come go on. for a walk, Doug. It's really chilly out here. Okay, uh, I'll get your jacket, Cheryl. You you wait right there, okay? Oh, uh, you guys, uh, don't don't do that. Listen, uh, they they were using your jacket for for a pillow. It's um, not pretty. But you you can wear my jacket. Here you go. Doug, I really. She doesn't want, want to put clothes well, on. Out, she wants to I'm take out. clothes off. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but but haven't you gotten just a teensy weensy a little bit more aggressive than you used to be? I mean, Cheryl, we're not going out anymore, okay? Uh, you, you live in Jersey, I live here, and uh, you, you just cannot turn this romance thing on and off, okay? But, Doug, I am so happy to see you. And super and horny. You gotten it? The problem is, is I can't see you because it, it's so dark out here. Let's go to Shopping Bond. There, there's light there, there there's people, <laughs> there's, there's Twinkies. Let's go buy some Twinkies. Doug, they're not going to know where we've gone. I'll, I'll leave a note on the windshield. Do you have a pen? Doug, my purse is in the car. Uh, that's okay. Maybe maybe one of these people have a pen. Okay? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, do, do you have a pen I could borrow? Sure. Need anything else? No! No, I... I quit it. I don't want your pen. Oh, no. Yo, you guys, uh, stop that. We're, we're gonna go up the shopping block. You come get us right now. If... Uh, their s religious sexual morality were portrayed as a personal code of conduct. Conduct, like this is something that I oh. won't do because I don't believe that this is don't the right thing to do. That, that would be one matter, but Listen, uh, that's not working. what they think. They believe saw, everyone that'll, that'll needs it. to conform yeah, to that's, what that's they okay. think Dad, is right and should, and, and that nobody should do clear. what they think okay, is wrong. Uh, it <laughs> is now, a I means to control other take. people, not just themselves. Something more it's Dad. Okay, Cheryl. Dad's gonna Let's just have storm sex. right in there. I just need someone to hold me. And tell me everything's I gonna mean, be all right. Since I've moved, my parents, they're never home. I don't have any close friends. I just miss you, Doug. She just misses you, Doug. Hey, if we were married, we could have sex right now, but we're not. I just can't believe the way you've been acting lately. I mean, I, I wonder if you're even still a virgin. Doug is an asshole, and it's none of his business. You're right, Doug. I'm not a virgin. And you're just mad because it wasn't you. I guess I'm gonna have to go someplace else to find a real man. I hope your Bible keeps you company tonight. Did you guys have a fight? Yes. Doug, put the pillow down. Want to talk about it? Yes. You want That's to talk always no, what you want to really. talk with Dad don't, about, don't right? Son, get over Dad, here let's talk down. about how much uh, this young woman wants to Doug, it's bang me, but um, I'm so conflicted because of women. my religious teaching Lots that of I'm incapable you know I'm of uh, yes. returning her affections. Have you ever been tempted? And in fact, I become hostile yeah, of course I that am. she would uh, even so attempt to um, uh, share yeah. you know? carnal knowledge with me. Here's something yeah, that is funny understand. about I mean, this show, all right? John so and Vicky Joe Witte 
um, Doug, the Bible talks are, about a moral woman. Said I'm pretty sure from Oklahoma, they have oaky accents. Well, Doug I mean, and nice Connie my best it's just uh, have Canadian accents. At this point in her life. So for some reason, the and parents have friend, oaky accents and the kids both what have Canadian accents. Her, uh, How exactly that did that happen? Doug, I'm just telling you what the Bible How says. do you Bible explain that? They wear a lot of denim in this show. I figured he would have told you all about it. Collins, get your physical over here right now. You're not going to be competing this weekend. Hey, Ty! Come on, let's go! You get the videotapes? I've got them! Let's go! <laughs> hey, thanks for letting Cheryl go. <laughs> After all, one man's trash is another man's treasure. She's one hot chick, Dougie. <laughs> You're sick, Ty. Oh, yes, he's... he's completely sick for wanting to spend time with an attractive young woman. What a psycho. Jonathan. Jonathan, what are you doing, man? Daydreaming about your wedding day? Listen, coach said you better get the results of your physical in there. You won't be running this weekend. Look, Collins, just take off, all right? <laughs> Look, what is it? Did you have a fight with Susan? Just give me the results of your physical. I'll I dig that coach. jacket. You want the results of my physical? I want that I'll guy's jacket. I'm dying, all right? I'm dying! It was very dramatic. Dying, man? You're not dying. You're only 18 years old. You're one of the strongest runners on our team. What is it? Is it Susan? Yeah. Yeah, it's Susan. She gave me AIDS, Doug. AIDS? Get out of here. See? No one around here has AIDS. What makes you say that? The physical, Doug. Look. HIV positive. Less than a year now. Active. You got AIDS? Yeah. Well, he has HIV. So which is the virus that causes AIDS. Jesus, just because you have AIDS doesn't mean Jesus doesn't love you. What's Jesus going to do for me now? Huh? Help me die gracefully? Look, I got some questions for your Jesus. Where is he anyway? Why do you let me get AIDS in the first place? Huh? Come on, you and him are buddies. Why aren't you asking for it? We'll go there right now. We'll ask. Come on, buddy, let's go. Come on, man. Oh, okay, so... If you have sex, let's remember, if you have sex, you will get AIDS. Well, I read you something from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 13, verse number 10. And that apparently turns you into a says, real asshole. Her sister, this obviously wasn't the right one me, my sister. to Don't, my brother, she said start him. with. Don't force me because such a thing not be done in this own. one Don't do this wasn't even thing. accidentally says, funny. But he refused to listen uh, this to is, we started right in she, with one of the episodes that... Then uh, is hated her with extremely hatred. problematic. In fact, he hated her more than he had loved her. And Amnon very uncomfortable to, to watch get now. Out and get out. You know and what? Amnon, as I recall, like so many young people today watching it back then, confused for a teenager, with love, which I was, a um, with his it really so reinforced that guilt that you felt you uh, lust to come into that because for having any there. kind so of sexual feelings or desires. God wants to give you, God now that you've watched that, that episode, Daddy you probably wonder why I'm so nostalgic about it. Why would I enjoy that? That was awful. Well, I agree with you. This was one of the awful ones. I probably should have found yeah, one that um, was a little a bit more lighthearted and, and didn't out. have quite such a heavy have? subject matter. This uh, kind of show and character. this uh, kind of religious shot, belief system and, and it's a love cannot and handle a sex uh, or homosexuality I'd rather in a way that isn't awful. They are children and teenagers relentlessly are homophobic. In large social groups, um, they are bent on controlling other, but nobody uh, the sexuality of, young, of, well, every, of everyone, now, let me give you some but especially young people and especially young women. Help you to stay pure in your relationships and not get hurt and not get burnt. Make definite plans. Don't just kind of go out and say, well, we'll just see what happens. We'll do whatever comes natural. Don't do that, man. Say, okay, make definite plans time, go here, to have sex. Ha you know, do this activity together, make sure you have a place, have fun activities, comfortable that are, that are surroundings, do, but don't just go uh, a bed say, well, that's happens, large enough, or when trouble can come in. in also, a pinch, in the back seat of a, a car. All right, go out on double dates, Avoid being dates, alone. Your if you're group, alone, then that's conscious, masturbation. Go to where other people are. Which you know, if you're alone, I'm pretty sure is also a sin. No one has ever committed sexual immorality when two 
or three other people have been standing around, so you're safe when you're with other people. Four, yeah, three, you're safe. Strong in your convictions if, if there are two people, then you can have sex. Openly with the people you go out with. In other Be words, strong tell them what and communicate openly. Right from the beginning. That so way they have make to sure your partner knows that you out. want to have and, sex. And be strong when you tell them. If someone makes a move at you, one of you girls, he start, you know, Tom starts blowing in your ear. Just turn to Tom and say, Tom, don't do that. Okay. Just, just say, Tom, don't stop blow blowing in my ear. <laughs> and, 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 and make sure you say it the right way. I mean, don't look at Tom and say, you know, Tom, you know, that's, that's really feeling good. And if you keep doing that, man, I'm really going to, uh, you know, who knows what I might do. Don't, don't. No, just don't do that. Say, hey, you, you is, say, stop Tom, it. communicate. You real, stop real blowing in my ear. You, know, some of you, you may stop be that. Saying, well, Blaine, I, I've already kind of messed up in this area. I've already blown it. Well, you know what? There's a lot of She's other already blown it. Too, but they've been forgiven. And you can be forgiven. No because you you done. have uh, transgressed. And no You're impure. Else uh, you are guilty and, and require me. forgiveness. And there was a hope for me. And there was a, a ch there was Every chance I feel bad for and be a guys person. like this because um, I accept that Christ is my savior. They're so, so like, well, God can forgive me all but um, sexual sin. hung up no, forgive you all by sin. the indoctrination First, that they've experienced as sin. Second, you um, that, it. that has programmed you them to that believe God that uh, because they 10, have read. not had she, uh, sex in the 10, prescribed way, the the that chapter. they are damaged, they are impure, they are guilty, and that's very right powerful, and it can drive people to suicide in certain circumstances. And as you've just heard, the most important relationship that you could yeah, ever make right it doesn't have to be that. Way. God. And I feel bad for so Blaine Bartell to die for you and to because give you that love that you're looking for. Uh, Only Jesus can in a way, the same thing happened to him. With his love. Now, would you bow your head just for a moment? Close your eyes. I have no intention of bowing my head or closing right my eyes. Do a work in every person's heart that is watching. Cause the last segment of the show is pretty straightforward preaching. It's the same kind of for, for uh, sermon you would hear in and proving to them how uh, much they are a church your sight, uh, youth you service praise for all that you've done and all that you're going to do and no heart, no life, sketch in comedy all the fun Amen. stuff is over now we hear Jesus the uh, the preaching part and we don't want you to miss so we will have to watch part two and i'm sorry but um if we keep doing this i'll find a better episode there were episodes that um, that are possible to enjoy and um, and that aren't uh, so uh, shameful. This is shameful. It's homophobic. Um, it seeks to control uh, uh, people's sexuality. Uh, it, it's, it shows people like the heroes of the story attempt to exert control over other people's sexuality. It's fear-mongering. There is, they're, they're literally drawing a straight line from uh, having sex to death from AIDS. Uh, they don't talk about any safe way to explore your sexuality or your sexual desires. Um, because they don't care about that. They're not actually concerned about safety. They want to use the fear to control. You've probably heard the term um, hate the sin but love the sinner. Um, and of course they believe homosexuality is a sin. Uh, but some Christians at least pretend to love the sinner. They don't even do that. They are just overwhelmed with um, disgust at even being near a person who might be gay. Just being near that person, or just having that person in your house, is, just fills them with disgust, and they say, get out, get out of my house, get out of my life. Yeah, this is not harmless. And I'm sorry for starting with this episode. Tomorrow I'll have something sh easier. I'll do, I'm gonna do an easy one tomorrow. Um, and uh, as far as travel this weekend, I'm not sure. Um, I'm really not sure. I haven't decided yet. But at any rate, I'll see you tomorrow.